What's up, Ego Hackers? This is Chase with csjoseph.life doing another episode for season 21. This is the final episode, episode 17, how to social engineer INFPs. INFPs are known as the mystic archetype, and we're going to be talking about how to manipulate them into doing things that they don't want to do for the sake of your own agenda, while also simultaneously exposing how they can detect they themselves are being social engineered so that they can prevent you from manipulating them to fit your own agenda. And that's exactly what our goal is tonight and what we are going to accomplish. Now, I recognize with this particular lecture, it's taken a significant amount of time uh, to get to a point where, uh, you know, I'm, I'm releasing this lecture. It's okay, let's be straight. Season 21 is like taking a well over a year to produce. There's a lot of reasons for that. I had to do a lot of additional research outside of my expertise to be, as well as interview a bunch of people and to be able to come up with the information and the references and the resources to be able to produce season 21. It was very difficult uh, because a few of the types, I kind of had to go a little bit outside of my expertise because I was lacking in anecdotes uh, to be able to answer some of the directions with which social engineering was taking place. Luckily, for some of the uh, more important types, uh, you know, that was you know, necessary, and I did have plenty of anecdotes to be able to do that. But the INFP lecture in particular, while I do have a few anecdotes to share, I really wanted to spend a little bit more time talking about other people's stories and their experiences of social engineering to really hit this one out the park. Granted, I know that uh, here on the YouTube channel, I have consistently been demonized and derided for being uh, more critical towards INFPs than any of the other of the 16 types. Now, of course, most people would be like, okay, INFPs are complaining about that. Well, I'm an ENFP and I have a serious problem with that. Or I'm an ISFJ and I have a serious problem with that. Or I'm an ESFJ and I have a serious problem with that. You know, and Everyone seems like, hey, you know, get in line. CSJ has a problem with us and our archetypes. So, you know, like, well, while I understand that, I can actually verify straight up from my own personal point of view that I have probably been hardest on INFPs the most. Now, before that, I could say that I was hardest on ENFPs the most. But the reason why is because NFPs have a tendency of becoming extremely selfish, uh, caring about how they feel, uh, caring about their own comfort level, uh, not being willing to take the time to verify their own beliefs or really get involved in truth seeking, especially the immature versions of INFPs and uh, or NFPs in general, which has been a very huge concern. The problem is, is that, like I was telling an ENFP gentleman earlier this morning, out of all the personality types, NFPs can be, quite frankly, some of the most important, if not the most important of all the types. Uh, like, it's no secret that I often say that INFPs, that I personally consider INFPs to actually be the most brilliant of us all. I really actually do believe that. They have the capacity of becoming the most brilliant of all of the types, especially if they spend time reading. And uh, I also maintain that ENFPs can become insanely brilliant. I mean, look at Gary Vaynerchuk or uh, uh, even Ty Lopez, you know, he's in Mensa, for example. Uh, they, uh, there's ton, uh, Tony Robbins, he's an ENFP, right? There's tons of examples of famous ENFPs who, who go all the way. And then there's famous examples of INFPs. I have always talked about Robert Greene, for example. Uh, George R.R. R. Martin, right? Uh, maybe even Robert Jordan, a famous uh, author as well. Uh, you know, as INFPs. So I have been very hard on INFPs historically. And the reason for that is because honestly, I'm kind of biased. I'm biased against selfishness. I'm biased against self-aggrandizement. I'm biased against the fact that NFPs, especially INFPs have this problem where radical ideas come in, right? They have these radical ideas and they're more likely to believe those ideas if a given group of people accept that ideas and then they're willing to accept that or believe it as truth, even though it may not necessarily be that. And they're borrowing the credibility and becoming intellectually lazy uh, instead of actually verifying that belief on their own. Now, granted, not every INFP does this, and especially the more mature 
more cognitively integrated, um, wiser, more humble, more personally responsible INFPs out there. They definitely do that. And I'm very appreciative that they do that. And it's just a testament to their brilliance. But the ones that do not end up causing a severe amount of damage, and it's not just damage to themselves, but it's severe collateral damage, especially to society. The reason why is, is because the INFP archetype itself is insanely important because society itself is built upon the foundation that INFP philosophies and principles are standing upon. Let's be honest. So this is, the, and, and, and that's because the INFP is known as the mystic. They are the mystic. Uh, they are able to gather principles uh, from written works and stories and archetypes, collective unconscious, research that they do consistently always reading and they're able to create their own personal philosophy and it's that philosophy that becomes the foundation for rule of law was john locke for example an infp i know henry david thoreau he's an istj but an istj is still within the same delta quadra as infps right stj nfp quadra equals delta quadra delta quadra folk they're uh, they're like the, the walking libraries of Alexandria, the ISTJ being the most, but INFP, they're all about deriving principles instead of gathering all the knowledge in the world like ISTJs do. INFPs gather as much knowledge as they can so that they can create principles and philosophies as a result. And this gives them a huge amount of power because when you're talking about the affiliative, the general collective affiliative where people in society maintain, hey, this is the right thing to do or that's the right thing to do, et cetera, when you're at that point, uh, when, you, when, you, when you're considering that, you know, that can be a, a serious issue, you know. So uh, switching camera angles here to kind of like see me a little bit more. So with that in mind, uh, like what do you do at that standpoint? Because if you can manipulate a philosophy of an INFP, you can actually cause mass cultural change, mass public relations change mass political change and control that philosophy and end up creating a situation where you, if you control an INFP, you can control an entire narrative across a nation, a group, a community, a city, a town, a state, a municipality of whatever kind. You actually can do that because of the moral imperative or authority through the control of the affiliative that the INFP can wield, basically. And then, of course, the ENFJ social engineer can wield through the INFP. This causes a lot of potential problems, right? This could be a big deal. This could be a huge issue. And people don't even realize that INFPs can be manipulated such that all of a sudden you have a Manchurian candidate on your hands. Now, Manchurian Candidate is basically about uh, this guy, uh, I think from Manchuria, I must be straight, becomes a, a candidate for the President of the United States, but he was brainwashed earlier. He's actually a spy, uh, you know, for like potentially like Russia, for example. I don't know how the story goes. I'm just spitballing here, so forgive me. But the idea is, is to take somebody, mold them, manipulate them, social engineer them, build, bend them to your will so that you have full control over this individual even though on the external they're not, they're loyal to you. They may not even know they're loyal to you, which happens all the time to INFPs. INFPs sometimes, they don't even realize because they're SE trickster that they're being manipulated. NFPs, folks, they're so important. I mean, think about it. Like, when, when, when all of humanity and like the end of the world is going on, everyone's standing before the judge, right? You know, who's, gonna, who's going to speak on be, humanity's behalf as humanity is being condemned and about to be thrown into a fire? The answer is an ENFP. But where is the ENFP going to be getting the principles necessary to be able to speak that and advocate for humanity? Well, honestly, the source is the INFP because the INFP is the foundation for philosophy or accepted philosophy all throughout the world. Confucius himself, I maintain, was an INFP, right? So this is, this is huge. I also maintain that uh, the, the, the Dalai Lama is an INFP as well. I, there's a good chance that, uh, that, uh, that the original uh, Buddha, Siddhartha, and I don't even know how to say his name, was also an INFP. 
This is why you have a lot of this conflicting knowledge out there of these little memes or these, uh, you know, these little, uh, you know, um, gosh, uh, posts or recordings or articles, you know, out there where everyone's like, oh, you know, INFP, you know, INFJs are so hermit-like. It's because they're all mistyped, you know, in their reality, they're actually INFPs and then vice versa. That's why we get the Frank James, you know, being he's an actual INFP who's claiming to be an INFJ because he's not even aware of it. His SE trickster is there. He's not even aware that he has gone in that direction. He doesn't even know, right? And as someone recently uh, has super chatted me on the live stream to type him, et cetera, to get to that point. But the bottom line is it's absolutely imperative that we do not allow INFPs or have or INFPs get trained on preventing themselves from being social engineered because it could be absolutely catastrophic to the world as we know it. This is a serious issue. It is an absolutely huge issue. And when that's why you get like stories like the Manchurian candidate, because that stuff can actually happen. And I maintain the Manchurian candidate, like within within the book or the original story before the movie, was an INFP, quite frankly. You need an STJ NFP quadra to be good to really have someone who's really mentally capable to play the political arena, and no one can do it better than those types. No one can do it better politically. You know, the the Delta quadra to me is like the politicians, whereas the the teachers are the STP NFJ quadra. Quite honestly, you know, uh, but the uh, the Delta quadra, those those are the politicians, and uh, no one could do politics better than INFPs. I mean, Ron Paul. INFP, for example, you see what I'm saying? And it's important that we make sure that their moral principles are not corrupted by people who are marionetting them or social engineering them or taking advantage of them consistently, right? And this, ha this, is, this is more common than people realize. I'm sorry, but I gotta say this, but INFPs are extremely easily manipulated and social engineered it, it's it's so easy to do it it is so easy and you know all anyone has to do is emulate enfj to come up with this so anyway but before i continue i gotta say something real quick uh congratulations to uh benjamin bailey uh on the uh, how to social engineer intp's lecture your comment has earned you a copy of the art of deception by kevin mitnick uh, please uh, send an email to uh, support at csjoseph.life or csjoseph at csjoseph.life uh, and give us your contact information so that we can get you uh, your uh, copy of The Art of Deception sent to you right away. Uh, also, uh, Season 19, Episode 5, I hope, is going to be dropping tonight for Patreon Private. I already uploaded it today. My team is getting prepared uh, to make sure it's out there. It is how to cognitively develop or how to reach cognitive integration or how to reach enlightenment for ENFJs. That is dropping this evening. Uh, so make sure you guys check that out for those of you that are Patreon gold tier and above. It is absolutely fantastic. It is probably one of the best lectures I have ever done uh, for uh, ENFJs and talking about their development. So more on that later. So anyway, let's get back to INFPs. How do social engineer INFPs? From uh, from that standpoint, you know, it's very important that we go out of our way uh, to uh, make sure, um, that, you know, as they are the foundation, uh, uh, you know, the foundation of philosophy, uh, um, you know, that they have this. Uh, they have, sorry, I had to send a text real quick. Um, uh, so when it comes to that, um, knowing that they have this philosophy, it goes even further. INFPs have this amazing ability through their TE inferior, TE aspirational, um, that, uh, it can finally get to a point where it's like, you know, Hey, uh, we want to make sure that, you know, as it's a foundation, uh, try and make sure that uh, the, 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 like they have this control of the narrative, right? It's like a, so I mean, let me actually like write out a little in red here so I can kind of demonstrate what I mean. INFPs in this particular function here, there we go. The TE inferior function, it's all, it's known as like the, the second gateway through the inferior function. While they can be very afraid of what other people think, 
once they reach a high level of mastery through their TE aspirational and the like, that can get to a point where it's like, hey, they have the ability to thought manipulate anyone. And actually because of their expert intuition parent and kind of get an idea of how people might react or decisions people might make as a result of hearing their voice and hearing their powerful opinion, that those people will start to think things differently. And honestly, INFPs out of all of the types really are quite frankly, some of the absolute best mind controllers. They literally can mind control other people. And it's funny, no one suspects they're even doing it because they're the literal men walking, they're literal men behind the curtain. And that's like a, a, a Wizard of Oz-ism, basically. You know, the Wizard of Oz is the man behind the curtain controlling everything, looking like this big, ferocious, nasty wizard spirit thing on the outside, but on the inside is a very, uh, you know, uh, soft, uh, gentle, uh, moral, highly principled, educated man, etc. Uh, who I would probably argue is potentially an ENFJ, or an INFP, one of the two might be INFP focused ENFJ or the or the reverse because he's insanely academic, right? Um, so yeah, the, that's that's super important uh, just to understand that because they have the ability to control narratives, they have the ability to really go to battle in the political arena, they have the ability to um, basically thought manipulate and mind control people very all too often, INFPs do not consider that they themselves could be the victims of mind control. And this is especially true because they have extroverted sensing trickster. Extroverted sensing trickster is just not aware of what other people are doing. And as a result of that, INFPs can be completely unaware of the fact that they've just been brainwashed. And they're so easily brainwashed. It's funny because some INFPs actually recognize that they have that risk of becoming brainwashed or someone can create bias within themselves uh, to be able to, you know, to, to have that point of view. And um, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, meeting those INFPs who actually, you know, finally come, you know, to that belief. And the reason why is because those are the INFPs who are like, hey, you need to cite your sources. See what I'm saying? It's all about citing, uh, it's all about, uh, you know, like, hey, you know, I can't just believe that. And they end up questioning because they're really going out of their way with their TE aspirational to be as objective as possible because they know they have to be. The problem is, while they may be able to identify false premise and try to get to a better, more truer premise, the issue is, is that at the end of the day, it's a belief. It's not actually true. And then anyone who can manipulate the truth and make things seem truthy, the INFP can become a victim of that and they can end up finding themselves loyal to the wrong premise. Where INFPs can become loyal to false premise. And that is one of the reasons why they can be so easily manipulated from a brainwashing point of view. Because they are more open to believing somebody who makes them feel comfortable, who makes them feel good about themselves, who increases their status, makes them feel wanted, all of these different things. Now, and, and why is that? Why is that? Well, if you, if you guys look you know, up here uh, above me now, the hero function is introverted feeling. That function specifically, the way it acts, the way it behaves, is that um, it's, uh, you know, it's all about how they feel. They make decisions based on, hey, this is a good or bad thing. And they do it super quick, just like uh, you know a TI hero would do, or an INTP or an ISTP. But this is FI hero because they're breaking up everything in terms of values, value system. Okay, is this a good decision or is this a bad decision? You know, uh, where, where's the weight here? They make decisions based on weights. Their, their mind is literally a weighing system, you know, and it's like, hey, I need to weigh this out. You know, it's a... Um, you know, it's a scale. Their brain is literally a scale. Now, FI here was scaling everything out. Hey, okay, you know, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Doesn't necessarily mean it's true or false. Doesn't necessarily mean it's that way. So the way they make decisions, it's like, okay, this is good. This, this idea has to be a good idea if more people put more weight on it. So it's a good idea. So since it's such a good idea, I better believe it, right? Yeah, no, see, that's the problem. And that's one reason why INFPs, and this is why I'm so critical towards INFPs, because I have TE critic. 
TE critic is naturally wise and it's own it's wanting to be wise it can also be like a total dick let's be honest and very skeptical uh, it's the ultimate skeptic it's very skeptical of collective thinking it's uh, of group think and whatnot whereas the INFP sometimes becomes the victim of group think because they have no other options but they feel that is they feel they have no other option but to be loyal to the group think because that's the safe thing to do because when they stand outside of the norm and they stand outside of the group think their te inferior is at risk of losing their status and losing their reputation which means the ENFJ or the emulated ENFJ social engineer, all right, can effectively at that point in time literally control an INFP through their reputation alone. This is why INFPs out of all of the types are the weakest to blackmail. That is the number one way to beat an INFP. And you'd think, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. C.S. Joseph, how is it possible blackmail is the number one way to manipulate, control, or social engineer an INFP? Well, it's pretty simple because they're so afraid of people thinking less of them. And I could, I could cite a really good example right here. Here's a, here's a great example. Frank James. Frank James is a really nice guy. I really like the guy. He probably hates my guts. I, he probably doesn't. I don't know. But I like Frank James. Really cool guy. He called me one day. He asked me, he's doing me a nice thing, right? He asked me if I'd be willing to speak on his podcast. And uh, I said, you know, I'm not sure you really want me to be on your podcast. And he's like, well, why is that? And I'm like, it's because I don't think you're an INFJ, dude. He's like, really? Well, what does that mean uh, to you? You know, and I explained to him why I think he's, uh, why I think he's an INFP instead. And he actually said on the phone, you know, okay, I get what you're saying. I feel you're right. I feel you're right that I'm an INFP according to your system, right? But, you know, the system that I learned is the system taught by Dave Superpowers. Dave Superpowers is my mentor in terms of, you know, what I know about type and MBTI and psychology, etc. That's that's where that's my main source. And according to his system, I'm an INFP. I'm like, OK, that's fine. Or, or, or according to his system, I'm an INFJ. And I'm like, OK, that's fine, Frank James. You can have that belief all you want. But according to my system, which I maintain is the true system, as much as, you know, anyone would be like, Ow, I've just triggered all the INFPs by saying that because they're like, it's not all about it's what people believe. Do multiple people believe you, C.S. Joseph? Are your ideas good because the majority believes you? That's the one I'm, because that has the most weight. So you obviously are the one that I got to believe the most, right? You know, do you guys not see how at risk INFPs are of being completely ignorant if they just accept what the affiliative or what the majority of people say is true? I was just at, uh, I was at, uh, I was at, I was at Kaiser Permanente today in a hospital and I got to listen to an ENFJ doctor literally put up her hand to me and say, quote, stop talking, okay, to me because her TI inferior was forcing me against my will to listen to her even though she was completely wrong and she completely took away my voice with her TE demon and it's like, okay, well, why do I even bother? So I just decided to leave because it's like, look, the solution that you're forcing down my throat is not something that's actually healthy for me. Well, it's FDA approved. And my argument is, well, just because it's FDA approved doesn't necessarily mean it's true. I mean, the FDA, you know, look at it, guys. You know, the FDA says, you know, they're the experts, right? They're the affiliative experts. You know, the experts say it's true. So maybe why can't you, Mr. C.S. Joseph, why can't you, Mr. C.S. Joseph, accept that this is true? Why don't you believe me? Because, ENFJ doctor woman, I have... TE critic, I'm not going to accept the standard narrative, but if you're gonna to continue to treat me like an INFP as if I'm somebody that you can mind control and shove it down my throat, and because of all these people with all of these credentials saying it's this one way, does that mean that I have to accept that? Wow, okay, thank you for just steamrolling people. Thank you for steamrolling all those innocent INFPs for the sake of your self-aggrandizement because, oh no TI inferior, if you were actually wrong, you would have to accept that what I'm saying is true, which means you would be at risk of unlearning everything you've ever learned as part of the medical establishment. <gasps> oh no, 
And then you've tacked on your self-worth as an NFJ onto that entire premise of being a doctor to begin with. And that would basically be like, wait a minute, ego related suicide. And there's no way an ENFJ could do that. So they have to defend their point of view to their death, basically, at that point, for the sake of their, you know, ego death, as it were. Just something really to be aware of, guys. Like, you know, people end up creating these constructs of thinking that they will defend all the way because they've tacked their entire identity upon it. And INFPs do this all the time. They really do. They sometimes have their title or their entire value system. You know, I know this one INFP, he's a pastor. And he, in order for him to have the rank of pastor or the title of pastor, he has to believe in a certain way to be a member of his church network. Does anyone else out there think that that's ridiculous? I do. I think that's really ridiculous. Why should I, if I'm an INFP, be forced to believe a certain way, believe like everyone else does, in order for me to feel good about what it is I'm preaching to people at church on Sunday for the sake of my title, for the sake of my status, for the sake of my reputation? This is why I am so critical towards INFPs. Because I want INFPs to realize that it's actually fake. It's not actually something based on truth. That's my issue, okay? I'm not saying they're bad people. I am not saying Frank James is a bad person. What I am saying is that he's ignorant. But guess what? So is everybody. Everybody is ignorant. I'm ignorant too. I'm ignorant about a lot of things. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, like, for example, I'm ignorant about how, uh, how we can definitely tell what child is going to be what type and do it accurately. I know there's a way to do it. I just don't know how. And I'm very ignorant of that point, you know. I'm ignorant about a lot of things, okay. I was very ignorant about how intimate relationships work or, or self-development, self-growth, you know. But I put in the time to research. I was very ignorant about Jungian psychology. I put in the time and the effort. It really comes down to the time and the effort, but INFPs beyond that have the ability to go even further than that because guess what? Their expert intuition parent and all the experience that they gain within their SI child, specifically from all the books that they've ever wrote event, or read, excuse me, not wrote, read all those books, all those resources get stored within and they can literally extract the valuable ideas out and then create something new, a philosophy or a book of philosophy, you know, because 48 Laws of Power is a philosophy. If you think about it, 33 Strategies of War is a philosophy. Mastery, that's a philosophy. The Art of Seduction, that's a philosophy. The Laws of Human Nature, that's a philosophy, right? And the ultimate philosophy, which I maintain, is Robert Greene, the INFP's greatest work, his magnum opus, is the 50th Law, where he's talking about the law of fearlessness, fearlessness being the ultimate law of power which I absolutely agree. And it's an INFP who came up with that. Courage is usually attached to introverted intuition and expert sensing. But wait a minute, expert sensing is Robert Greene's SE Trickster. Wait a minute, how is it SE Trickster came to realize you know, the truth about courage and, and fearlessness? How did that happen? Because when you reach your angelic uh, form, uh, you know, within your four side of your mind, your, your superego, your trickster function becomes known as your master function, and then you can achieve mastery. More on that in season 19. If you guys would like to check out season 19, go to patreon.com forward slash CS Joseph, become a gold tier member and above, and definitely check that out. You'll, I highly recommend it, okay? I talk about that all the time. Also, the most recent Ruby conference. It was dedicated to the master function and how the master function works. The October Ruby conference is available to Ruby members as well. Um, so become a Ruby member, you can check that out. So anyway, just understand like, you know, this is where the, the value of INFPs come from, but it's also just as valuable to control them, manipulate them, because you literally have the ability to change society and bend society uh, to your will, bend politics to your will, specifically based on that. Here's a great example. My ESTP mentor told me a story about Ron Paul. My ESTP mentor was the biggest supporter of Ron Paul back in the old days of the uh, presidential elections uh, before Obama became elected, etc. And uh, he absolutely loved Ron Paul. 
he told me stories about how Ron Paul, they, they, that some people trying to control him, tried to blackmail him and try to bribe him uh, with a bunch of prostitutes and uh, young women and trying to get him to have sex with them and whatnot, and then used all that footage to, as a way to control him. But instead he's like, yeah, no, not interested in that. I don't know if that story ever happened, but I don't know if my ESTP mentor is talking out of his neck when he was saying that. Probably happened. I don't know. I don't know anything about Ron Paul for the most part, and I don't know anything you know, about whether or not that situation is true. But I thought it very interesting that if that is true or if it's not true, Ron Paul being an INFP in that particular situation, if an INFP has a moral failure, they could easily be controlled through their TE inferior as a result of providing blackmail as a threat of public humiliation. Remember what I said in season 10, episode eight. If you wanna watch it, I highly recommend it. It's how do INTPs compare to INFPs. If you're an INFP, please watch this. And I talk about how to motivate INPs within this lecture. And one of the ways to motivate an INFP, other than making them feel unwanted and making them as uncomfortable as possible, if all else fails, you have to resort to public humiliation. And that causes them to change when you threaten them with public humiliation. I'll be straight. There is nothing more motivating to an INFP than public humiliation. They hate public humiliation because they want to get the public eye off them as soon as possible because they would rather have people look at that external construct, that external perception of what they look like in the public eye because they don't really want people to know the real them and what really goes on inside and what real, you know, they don't want the real them. So they always are putting up the show, this facade for other people to see. This is also the same with ENFPs and ESTJs and ISTJs. It's also very true of ENTPs, although ENTPs, while we wear a mask, we're willing to take our mask off and show our true selves to see which people can actually handle it. And the people that can handle us not wearing our mask those are the people that we allow close to us. Those are the people that we have intimate relationships with. Those are the people that we allow to be our friends. However, when it comes to NFPs and STJs, especially the very sensitive, highly sensitive person, INFP, TE inferior, uh, because of people like them who are so insecure about how other people think about them, right? They rely on their facade all the more. The mask is always on. In fact, they become the mask. This is where you get ENFJ social engineers uh, constantly saying, hey, you know, as an ENFJ social engineer, you fake it till you make it. I even literally had an NFP this morning tell me, fake it until you make it. I had an NFP tell me two nights ago, fake it until you make it. I had an NFP tell me that yesterday in a meeting. Fake it until you make it. Wow. They really got something going on there. So remember, public humiliation and blackmail can really go a long way when it comes to INFPs. And I'm going to talk about the weapon that an INFP can use to crush and make them immune to blackmail at all times. Absolutely immune to blackmail. And it is absolutely amazing. But we're going to get to that in a minute. Let's actually talk about social engineering and some specific situations where it actually has happened. All right. So uh, let's talk about um, um, cognitive functions. How does one actually cognitively, um, how does one actually like cognitively, uh, uh, what, what, what would it be? Um, let's see here. Let's get this out of the way. Just trying to do this right. There we go. How would someone actually, you know, how, how, does, how does social engineering work from a cognitive level specific to INFPs? So the first thing that you want to do is, is, you know, get an ENFJ, because that would be ideal to do it. You could do it with INFJs. NFJs, you just need an NFJ or someone who can emulate NFJ, but in more in particular, their golden pair, also known as ENFJ. If you want to learn more about golden pairs and the highest compatibility, intimate sexual relationships, uh, with uh, INFPs, I recommend season 14, episode three, patreon.com forward slash CS Joseph Gold tier. Check out that episode and uh, you could check, you could see uh, what that, you know, romantic, super high romantic compatibility is like. 
But in a social engineering situation, a person's highest romantic compatibility also directly applies. It directly applies because they're able through cognitive synchronicity. And if you don't know what cognitive synchronicity is, go to our playlists, go to season five, watch cognitive synchronicity, right? These are, you know, all ways to go about doing this cognitive synchronicity. So from a cognitive synchronicity standpoint, obviously extroverted feeling is trying to consume introverted feeling because ethical people are searching for moral people, people who have high moral principles, right? But then it can become a form of emotional manipulation because the external force is manipulating the internal force. And it is up to the internal force to not allow the chaos of the external, the yin of the external to get in the way of the yang of the internal, the source, right? The source, the order, the chaos consuming the order. And that's basically how cognitive synchronicity relates to social engineering. When you have a chaotic force, an external force, changing, manipulating an internal force as a result so that that internal force adjust itself. It's kind of like brain waves, you know, and how brain waves uh, synchronize and desynchronize at different different times based on different stimuli. Or how when you put a bunch of women together they become super good friends, eventually their periods synchronize. Right? Is that an old wives tale still or is that actually like still scientifically proven? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I am not a doctor, nor am I a psychiatrist. So anyway, not that I would understand psychiatry would have anything to do with that, but I don't know, maybe it does. I, I have no idea because hashtag anything can be true, right? So anyway, INFPs, let's let's look at them a little bit, you know, from the type grid standpoint. Remember their, their communication style is background. So they're very behind the scenes, you know, so they're informative. Uh, so they're very indirect with what they say. They are responding. They prefer people to come to them to things instead of them coming to other people, which also makes them introverted. Uh, and they are very control-based, which means they are all about having outcomes. An INFP is not going to bother taking action unless they know that they're going to get an outcome that benefits them, which can also lead to them coming off and behaving like they're completely lethargic because it's like, well, I don't have a plan and I'm kind of not in the mood to make a plan and I'm really comfortable where I am right now, so why do I have to bother growing right now? Why do I have to bother dealing with this right now? Uh, and then they end up being lazy, you know, to the point where, it could be a mother with a small child, a small child taking over the house and they're doing nothing but sitting on their uh, phone and different to, what, to the fact that their child is being completely, it is destroying the house right in front of them, but they're indifferent to that on their phone because they're in their comfort zone. And then their husband comes home who's an ESTP and is like, what the hell just happened? Have you literally been on your phone all day long? This can happen. This is actually pretty common amongst INFP women, actually. Believe it or not, they can get so stuck in the comfort zone. Or another story, I, uh, INFJ friend of mine, local here, he has an INFP girlfriend and his INFP girlfriend, he basically told her, if you don't learn how to drive, I'm gonna break up with you because driving is what adults do. It's what adults who have personal responsibility do. And I am not your personal chauffeur and I'm not going to be driving you everywhere you want to go. That's not fair to me. You're getting way more out of this relationship than I am, right? And then it's like, whoa. And then all of a sudden she's like, yeah, okay. Uh, my boyfriend's not gonna want me anymore because look at that, you know, look, look at that right here. You know, any parent, um, you know, uh, oh look, my, my, my boyfriend's not gonna want me anymore. And it's also gonna be really uncomfortable if I'm not gonna be able to go where I'm gonna wanna go. And uh, yeah, I probably should do it. Okay, yeah, all of a sudden the INFP is motivated for change, you know. At least he didn't go so far as publicly humiliating her. Wait a minute, if he had broken up with her, it would have been really humiliating around her family because her family really loved that guy, loved that INFJ, and then she would have to be explaining for potentially years as to why she let that guy go. All because she didn't want to get out of her comfort zone and she wasn't in the mood to get a driver's license. Do you see what I mean? This is why I'm so critical of INFPs, okay? This is actually normal behavior for them. And they could allow so much bad stuff to happen. They could become so, they can end up like, because INFPs could be such victims of normalcy bias. And that's one other way that they could be social engineered. Normalcy bias, it's, it's a serious issue. Most people don't even realize it. Normalcy bias, because uh, they're so susceptible to normalcy bias that an ENFJ social engineer could create a new normal 
they could create a new normal, a normal that causes people, you know, cause these INFPs to accept bad things happening to them as the new norm, right? They can accept being manipulated and being social engineered as the new norm. It's like a form of Stockholm syndrome. Now, granted, you know, SI inferior with ENTPs and FE child are the highest risk of developing Stockholm syndrome when they're being social engineered, but that's not to say the other NPs are not weak to Stockholm syndrome because from the INFP point of view, their Stockholm syndrome is basically the same thing as being like, okay, you know, hey, uh, uh, I, I have a uh, Stockholm syndrome right now and uh, it's, it's related to the fact that I have this new norm, it's normalcy bias, that's the source of it, right? Whereas Stockholm Syndrome from an ENTP standpoint, from my standpoint, it's like, you know, well, I want these people to value me. I want them to want me, et cetera. It's not really a normalcy bias as much. It's more of just being self-sacrificing for the sake and exchange of, you know, thrilling experiences that, that serves the depravity of SI inferior. Whereas from an INFP standpoint, it's more of a normalcy bias. And that's, and how many times have we had like INFPs who are, day traders or big time uh, potential CFOs, CEOs of companies, et cetera, who have been in those positions and they get so used to their success that they don't even see, they don't even see that, they're, that a bus is about to hit them and they're about to lose everything. They get so used to their success that they forgot what it's like to fail. And that's a form of normalcy bias. And the ENFJ social engineer can basically take full advantage of that, right? So anyway, Let's look on a little bit more about uh, you know how how this all works. Remember, cognitive synchronicity is about functions interacting with each other because the highest level of cognitive synchronicity is when you have cognitive functions at the same level, literally at the same level, meeting each other at the middle. Why is this necessary? Let's look at relationships. You can have one person here, one person here, and they come together like this, right? Or you can have a person here and a person here, and their relationship's really hard due to very low compatibility. And it's like they're going up a hill and they have to climb this hill on so hard just to meet each other at the top. And then you have the relationships where it's actually really going downhill to meet each other and it's super mega easy. It's like breathing. And that is golden pair, silver pair relationships. Super mega easy. It can be like breathing or effortless in some cases, provided they both have the same maturity level, same amount of humility, same amount of personal responsibility, and potentially same amount of self-mastery in their life that they're able to have such an amazing relationship. Otherwise, if any of that is out of whack, well, they could be at risk of reading each other so well as a book that they're constantly manipulating and social engineering each other for their own personal gain, which could also be a problem and lead to a breakup and lead to like a horrible marriage divorce situation. Who knows? That can happen. Don't forget, Golden pair, silver pair relationships, they got the highest highs, but they also have the lowest lows because of just how integrated, like perfect puzzle pieces people are as a result of those relationships, right? So this is why the ENFJ social engineer is the best social engineer when you're trying to social engineer an INFP. It's literally the best thing because that, ENF, that ENFJ can literally create blackmail, can literally create a normalcy bias, can literally, you know, uh, have the threat of public humiliation as well as execute public humiliation on the INFP themselves and do it masterfully. The INFP knows that if the ENFJ is coming after them, they can't stand a chance. They really can't. Well, that's not necessarily true. We're going to be talking about how to get around that shortly. So with that being said, um, when performing a social engineering attack on anyone, you have to recognize that the cognitive functions, some of them are optimistic and some of them are pessimistic. Remember, optimistic functions, they're very, uh, they're very positive you know, versus very negative. So let's, let's look at this a little bit right here uh, on the whiteboard again. Um, so uh, positive. So what are positive? So by and large, because this is the ego, the ego itself is pretty positive. And by and large, the uh, unconscious it's actually pretty negative itself. However, while they have a negative filter, you look at the hero function with extroverted feeling. Let's look at this like uh, let's use uh, let's use blue here. So think of this as positive, positive. But then you have the pessimistic function, the first positive uh, pessimistic function, which is introverted intuition uh, parent. This is a positive, negative, right? And then SE is positive, positive, and TI is positive, negative. 
and then we go to fi villain that's actually negative positive and ne critic well that's negative negative and then si trickster is negative positive and then te demon is negative negative think about it in those terms when you look at the different filters or different uh like it's like electrical charges or psychological charges put onto the individual cognitive functions understanding the difference between optimism and pessimistic functions is absolutely very key i think i cover this in uh, season one and also season five uh playlist here on this youtube channel so with that being said okay uh, you have to know optimistic, pessimistic functions. The other thing you need to know as a social engineer is cognitive access, right? So let's look at cognitive access. Understand that, you know, we'll do it in green here. The hero function is very attached to the inferior function and that the parent function is very attached to the child function. This is cognitive access. Same thing with the villain function being attached to the demon function and also the critic function being attached to the trickster function. If you want to even go further, cognitive orbit, the hero function is attached to the villain, the parent function is attached to the critic, the child function is attached to the trickster, and the inferior function is attached to the demon. If you really want to go that deep into it, cognitive orbit can be utilized to, do, to perform social engineering attacks, definitely. Like for example, to an INFP, how would you do that? You basically make it look like no one is going to be to value the opinion of the INFP, and then they end up behaving like TI demon. Everything just explodes around them, and ISTP demon is out, even though in reality they believe no one's listening to their opinion. But all along, everyone was listening to their opinion, and they just been set up for failure, and they don't even realize it. The ENFJ social engineer made them do that. And that's a cognitive orbit attack, right? Well, then there's the cognitive access attacks, which is probably what we're gonna be talking about most, is like when you're social engineering an INFP, a cognitive access attack is, is that, you know, I need to get past the pessimistic functions. Optimistic functions is really the ones that you want on your side, because if they can be very optimistic about you, if the INFP is optimistic about you, the social engineer, they won't even see it coming. They won't even see that you created a new norm for them, a new norm of manipulation, a new norm of them accepting you, screwing them over. They're very interest-based, right? And because they're so interest-based, uh, you know, interest-based people are all about creating that win-win, right? They're all about creating that win-win. Win-win is everything. The problem is, is that normalcy bias can set in upon the INFP and they don't even realize it's a win-lose and they're the lose. They don't even get it. They don't even realize that this has happened after the ENFJ uh, social engineer has completely marionetted them around and they don't even realize that they're even being used at that point. They don't even realize they're being taken advantage of that point. And they end up becoming loyal and putting their faith into the wrong things, particularly the ENFJ social engineer, right? This is a serious, serious issue. So. Back, back to optimistic and pessimistic functions, you know, this can be, you know, an additional problem. So how do you, how, how do you deal with that? So optimistically speaking, you know, FE hero, it's very easy for FE hero to make FI hero feel good. But the problem is, is that you have to deal with NE parent. NE parents like, okay, what's your game right now? What are you getting out of this? What do you want? Uh, what's your intentions? What's your agenda? Any parent is very in their face. It's really hard to get past any parent, you know? But then like, there's also TE inferior. They're very insecure about what other people think. And sometimes the INFP right out the gate is like, cite your sources. How do you know what you're saying is true, right? And then, you know, I don't know, sometimes I get really mad at INFPs for saying the words, cite your sources. The only reason why that is it's because I know that when they say cite your sources, it's because INFPs never do. They rarely ever do themselves. They may do it in academia, but on day-to-day -day conversations with their family or their friends, do they really actually cite their sources when they share a belief that they have and then say it and then say it and label it true? Do they actually really cite their sources to actually provide a reference? No, they're being intellectually lazy. So they expect everybody else to be intellectually responsible while they themselves are intellectually lazy. That's a problem, okay? This is why I'm so critical towards INFPs, okay? This is where that comes from, right? 
So we find ourselves in a situation recognizing that we can take advantage of them as a result of that knowledge, okay? So T inferior is like, hey, you know, you better cite your sources, uh, Mr. ENFJ, social engineer, you know, any parents, like, what do you want, right? So imagine this, the ENFJ comes in uh, and it's like, you know, hey, uh, uh, you know, I, I, and this is one of the main social engineering tactics ENFJs use all the time. And my wife pointed this out, uh, and it's funny because both of us have ENFJ fathers, both of us. Um, but, you know, and both of us really know, you know, this is what ENFJs do. ENFJs are like, oh, hey, you know, I'm going to fake understanding to get something out of you. INFPs are probably some of the most misunderstood of all the types. This is why INFPs often hide under the label known as, you know, the HSP or the highly sensitive person, right? And uh, when it, and it's funny watching like, you know, INFPs who claim to be INFJs say they're highly sensitive persons because let's be honest, most real INFJs walk around feeling like robotic machines who do nothing but process data and nothing else and they feel robotic and they feel like soulless husks walking around. And then you have people claiming to be INFJs who are not, they're actually INFPs. Uh, being like, oh, I'm a highly sensitive person. I'm an HSP, LOL. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so like, wow, one does not fit the other. Are you sure that's the good choice? Are you sure a lot of people think that that's true? Are you sure? You might want to verify that. So let, let's let's dig in a little bit deeper here. Uh, you know, the, the ENFJ... You have, you have TE inferior, you gotta get past, you gotta get past any parent. So what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Well, in order to make the pessimistic functions on your side, which is the goal of social engineering, because if you get their optimistic functions on their side and make them more optimistic about you, you never have to worry about their pessimistic functions. You don't have to worry about the parent function. You don't have to worry about the inferior function, especially if their ego is not well developed, meaning that they don't have a high level of personal responsibility. If an INFP lacks personal responsibility, uh, you know that their parent function is underdeveloped, which means you can just target their hero and their child function so easy, make them feel good, you know, increase their status, speak highly of them to other people, bring them fun treats. Hey, you know, I wanted to get you this coffee from Starbucks today. Oh, isn't it great? You do it two or three times and before you know it, because you've given them so much attention, you're sleeping with them. I'm not even kidding, right? And I'm not saying that like, for example, INFPs can be that loose. They can be if you unlock their heart that quickly. If you know exactly what pressure points to do, you know exactly where to turn that key to unlock their heart. Oh yeah, they can be. This is one of the reasons why virtue and vice, they have loyalty versus disloyalty, uh, loyalty versus betrayal, loyalty versus treachery as their virtue and their vice because they're super mega, mega loyal but they can be very treacherous because of how loyal they are. And all of a sudden, start putting their faith and their loyalty into somebody else that treats them better. And this is kind of what gets INFPs, this gold diggerish or trading up uh, 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 reputation that they end up having when it comes to their relationships, right? And they're constantly like trading up all the time. It's really frustrating. This is what they do. Um, uh, you know, like, and as much as some women, you know, end up having the stereotype of the you know, gold digger or the stereotype of, oh, they're sleeping to, you know, climb the court, sleeping up the, the corporate ladder, basically. Well, I, this is very common behavior amongst INFPs. It's, it's, it's pretty common, actually, because INFPs like ENFPs are at risk of potentially becoming groupies, basically, for the band, you know, because they're all about bandwagoning in some cases, and the ENFJ social engineer is aware of that, can easily take advantage of that. You know, all the ENFJ social engineer has to do is make them comfortable, present them a new norm. Hey, this is the new norm. This is the new you, right? This is the new you. I'm gonna make you as comfortable as possible. I want to make you as comfortable as possible. And then any parent is like, well, you're taking care of my inner child really good right now, so I guess that means I don't need to question your intentions because you're making me as comfortable as possible. So obviously, your intentions have to be noble. Your intentions have to be good. They have to be good because what could your intentions be if you're not going out of your if you're always going out of your way and have a pattern of behavior of making me as comfortable as possible? Kind of like that Aziz Azora uh, smile he has on the opening of Parks and Rec.
he too is an NFP. You know, Tom Haverford. So then, uh, and then it's like, okay, well, how do you get past TE inferior? Always asking you to cite your sources. I don't believe you see TE inferior is all about, I'm not going to believe the social engineer, but it's so easy to get past TE inferior. All you have to do is make them feel as good as possible. The ENFJ social engineer, you know, introducing the INFP sucker to his friends, etc. Like, hey man, this is the guy. Uh, he's a really cool dude. He's got super high status. He's got these credentials. He's really brilliant. Oh, hey, you know, tell us about your opinion. You know, I really want to hear about your opinion. What's your opinion? What's your opinion? What's your opinion? Share your opinion. Hey, ho, oh, hey. What's your opinion? You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, these people, they really, they really want to hear my opinion. They're always trying to check me in. Yeah, you know, this guy is obviously legit. There was actually, uh, in the art of seduction, according to Robert Greene, an INFP, he actually wrote a scene where uh, there is this scam that they pulled off, uh, you know, uh, from this INFP guy. He's like, ooh, I'm going to get rich quick. You know, these people are setting up a fight. I'm going to bet all this money. And they social engineer him into betting money on a fake fight. And they make it look like that uh, uh, the fighter killed one of the other fighters. And they're like, oh, no, we're all going to go to jail. And they all just bug out. And then the INFP is like, wow, I'm really glad I got out of that situation. I got lucky. I'm not going to get caught. They can keep my $30,000 because at least I'm not going to jail. When the entire thing was staged. The entire thing was completely staged. It's not like Essie Trickster could figure out what's actually happening. It's not like Essie Trickster knows what reality is. It's all about, you know, what if, but they made him feel good. It's like, oh, you know, this guy is, he's an investor. He's, he's an investment banker. He's, he's a very uh, capable financier. Uh, what's your opinion? You know, where they toss out names like JP Morgan and, and, and big banks and, and other famous people to make that TE inferior feel like it's part of the famous crowd. Make, make it feel like it's a part of the, the famous people, right? Ooh, I'm fame too, because given an INFP, they love fame. They love status. They love feeling important. If you make an INFP feel important, quite frankly, over time, if you have a consistent pattern of behavior, they will be eating from your hand. And they don't even know. They don't even know that you're having relationships with other people on the side while you have them eating out of your hand. And they have this whole new normalcy bias. I literally watched with my own two eyes an NFJ woman convince an INFP man, a man of high stature, a man who was a professor at one of the most reputable uh, uh, universities in the state, convince him that polyamory was okay, even though he himself was a monogamist. But she sold him on the idea that it was the new norm. And morally speaking, he should consider it as a lifestyle. Even gave him the book Sex at Dawn to get him prepped, you know, hey, there's this guy, Christopher Ryan, uh, who, uh, who has these anthropological study on how polyamory is the norm for our race, etc. You should consider this as the new norm. And, and this NFJ social engineer provided the, the resources, you know, the, the book, right? The reference point for TE Inferior that's like cite your sources. And she convinced him and he engaged in polyamory. He would have never have done that before. But because of her, he is now a polyamorist. Even though morally speaking, his moral principles were against polyamory the entire time. But she made him feel so comfortable. She made him feel wanted. She increased his status. Um, she made him feel good. Talked so highly of him to other people. And then all of a sudden... He gets to go participate with her, you know, in, uh, you know, ha allowing her to have as many sexual relationships with other people as she wants, right? Even though initially he didn't want that. That's not actually like what he was going for. And then he ends up feeling, you know, unwanted in the end. Maybe she doesn't think so highly of me after all. I wonder how he felt when she inevitably invited him to go participate in an orgy, right? Maybe his SI child became so used to the new norm, the new normalcy bias, right? That he participated. 
and then he actually foments it. Then he supports that lifestyle of having orgies over and over and over again, right? And I'm not here sitting in judgment, folks. I'm not here doing that. I'm showing you how a man was, who had a moral principle of, not, of being monogamous and how that was so easily changed over time. You know, it's like what Glenn Beck, who is an NFP, he calls it the Overton window. When you take a person or a group of people, you know, and you slowly change the narrative over time so that their entire belief system is completely different from what it was. That's exactly how you social engineer INFPs. Because they mentally do not have the tools. Do you see, do, like seriously, do you see any introverted thinking in this ego right here? Do you see any TI? Are they really gonna spend any time verifying? They're trusting you as the ENFJ social engineer who is the verifier telling them this thing and then they end up believing you. And it's like a lamb led to the slaughter. Wow. And they don't even know. And all of a sudden, this INFP who was social engineered by this NFJ, he read Sex at Dawn, he became a polyamorous, he defends that belief system to this day and then encourages other people to participate. I'm not bagging on polyamory. I'm not doing that. Don't say CSJ is bagging on polyamory. I'm not doing that. It's a legitimate lifestyle that people live. It's just not the lifestyle I want to live, but that's what they live. That's their business. I'm not here to get in the way of their personal freedom or their choice. That's their choice, not mine. But what I am saying is, is this man initially did not agree with this. This man did not believe this, okay? And then it became the new norm. This ENFJ, or this NFJ social engineer, he got the new norm and he was willing to accept it. You know, it's funny because that can happen to NPs and that's how it happened to him. But the same thing that happened to me as a child where I had Stockholm Syndrome. I had Stockholm Syndrome, folks. I had Stockholm Syndrome with the people who were molesting me as a child, but my version of Stockholm Syndrome came out at the same time such that I ended up agreeing myself to become a polyamorous in the same way and be involved with these people in the same way. So even I, the ENTP, was weak to that form of social engineering attack as well. The difference was it was from a Stockholm Syndrome standpoint, as I explain in How to Social Engineer ENTPs, which I recommend you read, such that, but for the INFP involved in the situation, he, it was normalcy bias, a new norm, right? And we were social engineered by the same person. Absolutely ridiculous. I greatly regret being that person. I greatly regret not verifying my beliefs. I greatly regret not having my TI parent developed enough to have a sense of the personal responsibility to really verify my own beliefs and the beliefs of others. I could have protected myself and protected that man, but instead I decided to be depraved with my SI inferior. Wow. I loathe who I was. I regret who I was. I'm glad I'm not that way now, and I'm glad that people have forgiven me and shown me mercy since, which I really seriously appreciate. But honestly, folks, this stuff happens. Social engineering happens, okay? And now, anytime I have a conversation with anybody, uh, it's always like, okay, I have to ask myself the question, what are they getting out of this interaction with me? What am I getting out of this? Is this really a win-win or is this they're winning and I'm not winning? Is this a win-lose? And if it's a win-lose, well, I'm obviously being manipulated. Get out, into the dumpster, you go. If only INFPs had the TI to figure it out. Guys, when you have ENFJ social engineers social engineering you, guess what you gotta do, INFPs? Go find another TI user to verify what was just told you by the previous TI user. Use the truth. No wonder Jesus Christ himself says, and I quote, the truth will set you free. Ah, the truth will set you free. Wait a minute. What does that mean? So, blackmail. Blackmail is so easy. It's, it's such an easy way for INFEs to be controlled. Blackmail is a serious, serious problem. 
Think about it this way. Imagine you had a political action group that was in secret, or maybe you had an intelligence group, um, uh, maybe working for a military or a government of some kind. And let's say you were in like a, a third world country or a first world country, it doesn't matter, there's prostitutes everywhere, and you arrange for prostitutes. Or maybe you arrange, and I'm not, I, I'm not supporting this, but like I've heard rumors of this happening. Like, think about it, blackmail. Uh, blackmail can happen. Imagine if you're an INFP politician, and then you meet this ENFJ blackmail that introduces you. You know, hey, you're really important. You're really great. You're really amazing. I'm going to introduce you to these bunch of girls, and these girls will have sex with you. And then all of a sudden, the INFP is like, oh, awesome, I'm really important. They, they buy into the idea of their own self-importance. They buy into the idea of their own fame. And they end up having sex with all these girls, only to find out later that some of them were underage. And that this ENFJ social engineer has photos of it and recordings of it and said, hey, I could get you in jail for the rest of your life unless you do what I tell you to do. And then all of a sudden, the INFP is forever trapped. That stuff happens, people. That's a lot more common than you realize. There's even rumors that, you know, like, especially as of recently, with recent current events, where I keep hearing these rumors of that stuff happening all the time. Guys, verify this crap. You never know who you are actually really dealing with, especially on the internet. And if you're an INFP with any form of influence, any form of influence, if you're a public figure or a celebrity or about to become a public figure or a celebrity or a politician or anyone of any importance or significance whatsoever, you are a target. How do you prevent yourself from being social engineered in this way? How do you stop yourself from being blackmailed? All you have to do is verify, research, tell the social engineer, cite your sources. They provide sources that seem credible. Go to another TI user and ask them to verify it for you. Who knows what you'll find? Perform background checks. Don't allow anyone to run off with your TE inferior. You have to protect your TE inferior at all costs. I know that you love, you love you some status, you love you some titles, you love you some fame, but why do you believe that fame is gonna get you all these good things when the reality of the situation is you have no idea that you are just the lamb to the slaughter and people are gonna be taking advantage of you? The only way to beat blackmail, if you are a victim of blackmail, there's only one way. The truth will set you free. You play the truth card and you come out in public and you humiliate yourself on your terms, not their terms, and, and take responsibility for your actions, for things that you did. And you take all the power away from the blackmailer, all the power away from the ENFJ social engineer. You take it away from them completely. So why is that necessary? Well, because the ENFJ blackmail at that standpoint, guess what happens? They get exposed. They get completely and utterly exposed. They end up so exposed that it's like, hey, you know, this person, oh, by the way, I'm taking full responsibility of that because this person over here is blackmailing me. And all of a sudden the tables have just been flipped. Maybe if you really did end up committing a crime, for example, and you're being blackmailed by that person, maybe the investigation into you committing that crime would lead to the ENFJ, and then the ENFJ goes in down in flames too, and then you just did yourself a nice public service for everybody. As a result of you being willing to take responsibility for your actions, I wonder if the courts would be far more lenient to you, INFPs. I wonder if public opinion, wait a minute, would be more lenient to you. Let me tell you something, INFPs, that's super important. Something that you can put your faith into. Something that will protect you in those times when you're facing down blackmail and you know that your only option is to tell the truth or forever be controlled by this person. What if this person, and you're a politician, and they control you through blackmail? What if they control you and tell you to vote on things that are morally reprehensible? Do you really want that on your soul in the long run? all just because you gave in to your self-aggrandizement and your sense of fame and you ended up having sex with the wrong person at the wrong time while being filmed and photoed? 
because if you give in to the blackmail, you're going to end up committing worse crimes. You might want to nip that in the bud sooner than later. You need to invite public humiliation on yourself and do it on your terms. Why is that? Because people, I tell you the truth and the truth will set you free. INFPs, hear me. If there's anything that you ever, ever learn from me, ever, this is it. This right now is it. Take full responsibility for your actions publicly as soon as possible because a man who humbles himself will be lifted up. It is written, he who humbles himself will be lifted up. It's a fact. Human beings, when there's someone arrogant and conceited and prideful, they tear those people to the ground and they tear them down. But INFPs, for example, who, or anyone for that matter, who are humble, people who publicly humiliate themselves, that's as a result of humility. When people see someone who is taking on consistent acts of humility and behaving with humility, all those people flock around that person and empathically through empathy raise that person up. Whereas if someone is behaving pridefully and arrogantly, everyone tears them down. So you could put your faith in that INFPs when you're facing down that NFJ social engineer who has just completely caused you through well, you did it yourself, your actions. You allowed them to manipulate you into doing moral reprehensible behavior and now they have blackmail on you. The faster you come clean with it and publicly humiliate yourself, even though they're threatening to humiliate you and you play the truth card, you got the truth card, that's your trump card, you play the card because you decided to play the card of truth because the truth will set you free. They no longer have power over you at that point, INFPs. They have no power. And everybody will flock to the cute little INFP with FI Hero and raise them up. <coughs> Such that courts and public opinion, public relations, the public opinion will be sympathetic to your cause and potentially the courts may be lenient on you. Who knows? Somebody will be lenient on you. Wouldn't you want leniency instead of a lifetime of slavery to the blackmail? Isn't that what you really want? You can always put in your faith, you can put your faith in people that if you behave with humility and play the truth card in humility, that people will run to your side and be there with you. You can put your faith in that. I promise you, INFPs, you do not want to live that life. Some of the reason why our world sucks so badly, especially, especially with politics right now, is because we have so many people who are being blackmailed. And this is not just in the United States of America, this is worldwide. So many people in power being blackmailed to do things that they don't want to do, but they won't do it because they're so afraid of losing my reputation, my status, my titles. If Frank James came out and admitted publicly that he was not actually an INFJ, but was an INFP, what would happen? Many people would flock to him. Even more people. He'd say, what I've been talking about INFJs has been INFPs, except for these episodes are here because that was more about Dave's superpower stuff so that's probably more likely to be with the truth. But then all of a sudden he has a whole new source of content for his channel and he's providing INFP content and so many more people would flock to him in his channel. So many more people would lift him up because of him taking that humble act because he's willing to risk public humiliation. See, that's the difference between an INFP who's getting closer to that angelic force when they become cognitively integrated than an INFP who's so afraid of losing my status and my titles, right? So afraid of it, right? And it takes all power away from the ENFJ social engineer. You see what I'm saying, folks? Like it's super important. NJs, NFJs have this thing where they are consistently trying to eliminate competition. Sometimes this includes in business. So, hey, I'm gonna go blackmail this person who has powerful, who has a powerful voice. Because that's the thing. INFPs, you have to realize, out of all of the types, 
you have the most valuable opinion of them all. This is why you're so important. This is another reason why I am so hard on you INFPs all the time. I rag on you guys so hard because you have the most powerful voice to the point where you could heal so many people just by speaking because everyone listens to you. No wonder Jesus says, he who has an ear, let him hear because you're the ones who could speak and you have the most powerful opinion, the most valuable opinion, especially when you read and you create that amazing personal philosophy, those amazing principles, right? This is who you are. But why, why are you so afraid? The more you read, the more knowledge you gather, the more valuable your opinion is. And NFJs, no one wants to listen to TI inferior sometimes. No one wants to listen to TI child. And NFJs know that you have the most valuable opinion. So they social engineer you to take advantage of that opinion. Just like that seductress who sold polyamory to this INFP and it became part of his belief system. That INFP preached polyamory and turned many other people to polyamory, for example, right? In this example. And it was never actually his moral standard, his personal moral standard. He allowed someone else to manipulate his moral standard. Wow. All over a lie? Wow. INFPs recognize that there is one way that you could free yourselves. And that is what I just said, the truth card. The truth will set you free. If you are not willing to play the truth card, then you will be forever enslaved to your social engineer. And you will commit so many more atrocities. And you will corrupt the foundations of society itself such that the masses themselves will also become enslaved. I dare say, like ENFPs, INFPs are the most important of all of the types, in as much as they are the most brilliant of all of the types, because your opinion can change everybody else's thinking on a whim, because it's that powerful as soon as you realize how much power you actually have and your opinion actually has, especially in the socio-political arena. Think about everything, how many lives people have, ch have been changed, specifically because of Robert Greene, the INFP's work. The 48 Laws of Power is read more in prisons than the Bible. And the Bible is the second most read book in prisons. There's a reason for that, folks. The 48 Laws of Power. Okay? And I don't know how many times I've heard INFPs deride and demonize Robert Greene as this evil person who's teaching people how to do evil. No, he's doing what I'm doing. I'm teaching social engineering so people can prevent social engineering prevent others and protect others from being social engineered and protect themselves from being social engineered. I wish I had someone do that for me before I became a victim. And now because I was a victim, I'm gonna tell you so you stop being a victim and you can prevent other people from being a victim just as Robert Greene did with his book, 48 Laws of Power. The first law of power goes like this, never outshine the master. I outshined the master one time, I called out my boss publicly before everybody for filling out our timesheets is illegal. He fired me on the spot and I became homeless. Never outshined the master. I wish I had known that. Things would have been a lot different. Things have been a lot different for me. Thank you INFPs for what you bring to society and what you do and what you do for this world. You are the foundation, but when you guys are shook, when you guys are in that position of pastor, politician, day trader, right? Uh, writer, author, philosopher, um, hermit, mystic. When you are this person and you allow people to control you through your reputation, it harms everybody. And it literally takes the future because as you are enslaved, INFP, INFPs, so also society will be enslaved through you. Conversely, 
as you INFPs are freed and freed by the truth, so also the rest of society will be free. Never forget that. And note that that is your highest moral responsibility to yourselves and to the world and to this race of people that we call humanity. Your purpose is literally to find the truth and tell people the truth and expose the truth by willing to become exposed yourself because in humility, the truth will come to light and it will light the way for the rest of us. This is literally your true calling. And if you allow yourself to be social engineered, you will create a world of lies instead of a world of truth. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Also leave a comment below and a like to it. I do apologize it's taken so long uh, for this lecture to get out uh, and be produced, but I really wanted to make sure I nailed it out of the park, especially for the INFPs, the type of people that I have been uh, hardest on the most. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, hearing me out and uh, being here uh, with us today. I really hope this uh, recording uh, <laughs> survived and made it. So with that being said, because it's also a Patreon live lecture, I'd like to take the time to open it up to uh, uh, Q&A as well. So we're going to be doing that uh, right now. Um, so let's see here. Okay, here we go. Cool. Um, let's, uh, let's see here. I was going to participants. Got lots of attendees. Uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, um, questions. Uh, we just had uh, Moody McSorley say uh, more of a comment, but it, but see if you think it's true about INFPs. Jesus said, be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. I sense a lot of INFPs believe they can get in, get by in life just by being innocent as doves, but many of them are stuck and lost because they're not learning how to be wise like serpents. Preach it, Moody, preach it. That's fantastic. I appreciate that statement. Uh, anyone, anyone in the uh, the patron audience uh, would like to have your questions? Ask your questions regarding this lecture now, and it will be added to the uh, um, uh, uh, to the lecture when it when it is uh, released and and the like. I'm actually going to make some adjustments here. Um, there we go. Cool. We're going to remove the whiteboard there and keep going. So. Uh, this is uh, questions. Okay, so Lev asks, which side of the mind would you develop to prevent social engineering? I assume it would be the shadow. Actually, it's kind of like all sides because as you develop each side of your mind, you get personal responsibility from the ego. You get humility from the subconscious, which you need to be willing to do as an INFP to get that truth, uh, for example, to be able to play the truth card to defeat blackmail once and forever, once and for all. And then uh, unconscious also provides wisdom. Uh, you kind of need all three to be able to unlock the angelic mastery of self through your superego, right? So I think it would be fair to say that integrating all sides of your mind is necessary to do that. However, if, if you have personal, all the personal responsibility in the world and all the wisdom in the world from your ego and your unconscious, if you lack humility, you're not going to be able to play the truth card and ultimately defeat blackmail. So I think the biggest prerequisite would have to be the subconscious and subconscious development through the uh, ESTJ subconscious and being willing to take the humility and wi be willing to humiliate themselves publicly. I find it interesting that STJs are some of the most likely of the types to be willing to take personal responsibility uh, out of all of the types. And I think it's really interesting that the ESTJ, which is the type that takes personal responsibility the most of all the types, just happens to be the subconscious of the INFP, the type of person that they're trying to become. So. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, yes, uh, season 19, episode five was uh, was posted. Um, loving the gamer chair. Thank you. <laughs> um, any other questions? Uh, I'd I'd appreciate it, folks. If there are any other questions? Oh, there's a Q and A button here. There we go. Uh, prevent. Oh, I already answered that question. Thank you, Lev, uh, for, for asking that question there in the Q&A session, section, whatnot. Um, anyone else have any questions uh, before I uh, finish the lecture here? Just uh, making sure. Uh, OK. 
okay, typing one. Uh, Jay asks, uh, what do you anticipate Frank James' reaction will be? I honestly have no idea. Uh, Frank James is kind of in a world of his own, but I guess that's very typical of INFPs to be in their own world on their own. But I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to, uh, you know, to tell him that, uh, you know, like, I, while I could say that he's wrong, I'm not here to tell him that, uh, you know, he's a bad person. But I mean, like, hey, if he plays the truth card, he'll he'll even grow and explode his channel even more because as much as people like tearing people down and tearing down the pride, especially through public shaming, um, people love to raise people up when it really matters. And this is actually proven in a book written by John Ronson, who, interestingly enough, he's an INFP, John Ronson, and it's so it's called "So You Have Been Publicly Shamed." I invite every INFP uh, to read that book. I think that book is like the uh, the INFP truth book. Like it's probably the most important book that an INFP could actually read other than all of Robert Greene's work. Uh, so You Have Been Publicly Shamed. It's available on Audible right now. Uh, uh, John Ronson, as it talks about the process of public shaming and how we're in a new age of public shaming, etc. cetera. Um, and he's very uh, uh, sympathetic, you know, as a result. Um, and uh, so Moody seems to be typing out a question right now. Uh, let's see, is there any other questions to go with that? Uh, just uh, waiting here. Oh, here we go. Moody's question. INFPs are associated with creative arts. For example, musicians, novelists, etc. Can INFPs merge their destiny to find the most valuable truths and share it through creative mediums? I definitely think so. Uh, so uh, Frankie's Arts, uh, Frankie, who is an INFP uh, on uh, our Discord server, I don't even know if she's still around anymore. She's a fantastic artist. She did a lot of, a lot of our art, a lot of our type related arts uh, for uh, this community when she was commissioned to do so. Uh, she is able to abstract, uh, you know, the most valuable truths, I would say, from a uh, psychological type and, and with each of the cognitive functions and create art out of it. And we can see that consistently over time. Uh, I think, I, I would like to say that maybe INFPs invented jazz music. I, I, I'm kind of sure that that's what happened, but like, uh, but I, I'm really not gonna go that far because I can't exactly verify that. But it's just like my gut instinct that jazz music came from the INFP archetype specifically. Um, I could argue ISFP as well, but I really think that, um, you know, or maybe even, or soul probably did as well. But uh, I think jazz is mostly like sourced from an INFP. I wonder if Jimi Hendrix is an INFP. He could be an INFJ and maybe we typed him, I don't remember, but, uh, or, uh, or maybe we typed Bob Marley and that's what it was. I always get those two mixed together for some reason, so. Uh, but yeah, and uh, okay. As an ENFJ, how do I help my INFPs uh, excel? Is social engineering to help them uh, boost their spirits a bad thing? I am as someone who maintains that the ends justify the means because I am a pragmatic and most pragmatic people do that because hey, it works, so why not do it? Um, in terms of it being a moral or ethical thing, if the result or if the outcome, Rachel, is, uh, if the outcome is ultimately to the benefit of the INFP uh, and making them a better person, yeah, social engineer them. But I'm trying, you know, when I, because remember, everyone social engineers. Everyone social engineers all the time. Because remember, all human interaction is manipulation, positive or negative. Manipulation is actually very, um, neutral term, even though INFPs, for example, assume it has such a huge negative connotation, right? As a very big negative connotation, and that's a that could be a problem, you know, as a as a result. Um, so uh, just something to keep in mind. So yeah, definitely social engineer your INFP for the sake of their benefit. Uh, absolutely, um, this is very everyone basically kind of actually does this in all of their relationships, be it parenting or their spouse or, or their parents. That's kind of necessary. Often, I mean, when you watch all these cop shows or these, these television, these SJ shows because we live in the SJ society, United States of America, and then people are like, well, I lied to you to protect you, right? There's like a justification there. 
while I don't advocate for lying, I recognize that all human action is social engineering. It is manipulation in some way, shape, or form. If the end result is, is that they're a better person, um, then, then I guess have at it, quite frankly. Um, uh, Moody McSorley says, I grew up with an ESFP father who was a musician and had a lot of music, uh, musical training growing up. I wonder if I can reconcile that creative urge and my scholarly pursuits, LOL. Uh, Cherry asks, does having an interaction style of behind the scenes, AKA background, make it harder for INFP to speak their truth? Kind of. They're so afraid that nobody would be willing to listen to their opinion that INFGs, INFPs end up choosing to not share their opinion. This is why I accuse uh, INFPs of all the time of silently judging other people. And sometimes INFPs don't speak up, which causes a lot of damage. I mean, Dietrich Bonhoeffer mentions that in his book uh, re relating to Nazis and, and World War II and the camps because uh, the whole point of the book is this, not to speak is to speak. You know, people, uh, you know, they came from the Polish, you know, and no one said anything. And the people came from this group of people, and no one said anything. The Nazis came from that group of people, and no one said anything. And the Nazis came from me, and there's no one left to say anything. This is why INFPs end up having those valuable opinions. But if they're too scared or lack a backbone to be able to speak their opinion, then people could die. So it's absolutely their responsibility to speak. And then when they make a mistake, be willing to take public responsibility for that mistake that they have made and then fix it. This is why it is written, a wise man has many counselors. So a wise INFP would have a bunch of TI users around them to verify the beliefs with which the uh, INFP derives their principles and their philosophy with which they use to speak. I hope that makes sense. Um, Moody McSorley asks, INFPs do the sins of omission more than the sins of commission, e.g. not speaking up when needed. Yes, they do. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, so thank you, uh, Moody, for that point as well. A couple more questions came in. Um, what would be the best way to appeal to an INFP once their repulsion switch has been uh, flipped? Um, basically prove them that their feelings or their principles are incorrect and force it upon them. And then tell them if they're not willing to listen that they're going to be unwanted or you're going to make them uncomfortable or you're going to be willing to publicly shame them for their incorrect point of view. They have to be willing to do that. Or you can do as NJs do, just door slam them and have nothing to do with them. That will leave them feeling unwanted and realizing later that maybe they should change. That's basically all you can do. Uh, Dominic says... Uh, my wife is an INFP, and while watching this lecture, my daughter was outside screaming, and my wife was so worried about what our neighbors were thinking. LOL. Well, fair enough. <laughs> a very, uh, a very interesting point of view. Um, so, okay, cool. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, last opportunity. Uh, last opportunity for questions. Anyone else uh, at all? Uh, Lev asks, can you social engineer an INFP if you are being informative or do they prefer only direct? Yes, you can social engineer an INFP being informative or direct. It doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes, uh, although sometimes the ENFJ social engineer, while they are very direct, they also have, you know, informative, uh, informative sides, but they have two direct sides, you know, for example, um, IST, well, technically three direct sides. So yeah, being direct can be actually very useful because sometimes you have to steamroll an INFP into action and ENFJs are great at steamrolling people if I have a permit. It's funny how as a TI parent, as an ENTP, I'm often accused of steamrolling people when in the reality of the situation is I end up just like, I'm not exactly like, uh, when the reality is ENFJs and sometimes ESFJs steamroll way more. TI inferior is all about the steamrolling once once they get going. So it's kind of a, an interesting dichotomy if you think about it. Um, so I don't think they only prefer direct. I think that uh, direct may actually be more useful from a steamroll standpoint of view uh, standpoint, but uh, otherwise probably not, probably. Uh, I think any way could be done. Remember, it's all about cognitive emulation. And to learn more about cognitive emulation, see the latter episodes of season one uh, playlist on this channel. Um, 
A bit of a selfish question, according to Lev. If NFPs and NFJs are the most important types, how do you rank the rest of the types in terms of importance? You don't have to answer this. Uh, the reason why I say uh, they're so important is because those types as the idealists uh, ultimately are responsible for the final result of humanity. Where is humanity's, and they literally control or have the fate of humanity in their hands, which is why I maintain that NFPs and NFJs ultimately have the highest level of importance for our race. The thing is, is that while they have while they have the fate in their in, in their hands, they can't exactly execute that fate properly or get us to a better fate, not without using the intellectuals. And the intellectuals will not be able to get their inspiration except from you know the artisans and ultimately the guardians as well. And the guardians are there as a foundation for our race to stand upon, and they're the springboard. They need to have the guardians, you know, to be able to do that. You know, temperament wise, while communication style wise, the background types are like the solid ground our race stands upon as well. So that's why it's kind of like even killed all the way across the board, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, because without without guardians, no one's going to, you know, enforce those uh, principles or enforce those truths, etc. But the thing is, even guardians can get corrupted with improper or, you know, or thinking that's not even real. Uh, you know, like, for example, uh, forms of birth control. You know, people think that, like, just because something is FDA approved does not mean it's healthier for you than the non-FDA approved approach, right? And that's not just with birth control. That could be with anything, right? Just because it's FDA approved does not mean it's healthy for you. I mean, you can look at it, like, for example, with MRIs and gadolinium. There are many countries out there that ban gadolinium contrast due to the damage gadolinium causes to kidneys. It can cause kidney failure, but it's perfectly okay, and it's FDA approved in the United States of America. You know what I'm saying? And it's standard. And any time you tell someone at a hospital that you don't want gadolinium contrast when you're getting an MRI because of the kidney risk, they look at you like you're crazy. Because, you know, the guardians of the medical establishment, uh, you know, like to look at their, their, their so-called studies given to them by Big Pharma and accept those as truth. And that anyone who challenges that authority of Big Pharma, that affiliative authority, because they're very authoritarian in the medical establishment, then you must be obviously stupid, which I completely disagree with. And that's why we need INFPs out there to share counter opinions using their very powerful voice to change society so that we're not subject to constructs and entities like big pharma uh, or big oil etc or big banks or whatever big xyz thing uh etc so um uh dominic asks how do i win my infp's wife my infp wife's attention uh over uh my children uh well basically you have to explain to her that she has to come to realize that uh, um you know Women have this problem. It's kind of interesting. This is more of a neutral thing. Women often put their children above their husbands, and they really shouldn't. Uh, women should be putting their husbands above their children. This is why I encourage people, you know, if you're making dinner for your family, uh, the man of the house eats first, and no one is to eat until the man of the house eats first, and really having that order set. Because if they're placing the children above the man, then what? why does the man even bother putting as much effort as he does into the sake of his home? I think that's absolutely ridiculous and potentially, uh, ultimately, a potential feminist attack on the sovereignty of the male species within our race of humanity, I would imagine. So um, uh, basically, you just lay down the law for her, uh, you, you know, be willing to tell her, hey, you're going to be unwanted if you continue to behave this way or you make her uncomfortable or if necessary, bring in other people that she respects and complain to them about her behavior in choosing uh, the children and giving her the majority of her attention to the children instead of you, which is making you feel, um, you know, ultimately unwanted yourself or uh, lacking in status or, uh, you know, and which is, uh, you know, because SE heroes, they need attention more than anything, more than anybody, let's be honest. And that would be kind of the approach I would take. Um, and uh, cool. Well, uh, I think that's it for uh, Q&A tonight, uh, unless someone's typing something real quick and they're going to hit enter in the next 20 seconds. But it uh, doesn't look like that's going to be the case. 
So I'm going to close up a Q&A here, especially since it's about 7 p.m. here right now. So anyway, uh, thank you all for your questions. Thank you for being our uh, patron subscribers and participating in this month's live lecture. It was absolutely fantastic. And uh, thank you for being here for How to Social Engineer INFPs. Been definitely uh, waiting for this lecture. And I just hope to God the recording uh, sound and visuals are good because I would really hate to uh, spend the hour and a half to uh, reshoot all of this. So anyway, folks, thank you all for everything. And uh, don't forget season 19, episode five for ENFJs uh, just dropped on Patreon Gold tier. At least I think it did. I saw someone in the chat say it did. So like awesome because I filmed it earlier today and it's been posted. So um, and then this will also be posted to YouTube uh, pretty soon as well. So anyway, folks. Thanks for coming tonight. It's a fantastic live lecture and I'll see you guys next time. So have a good night, folks.